بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters I want to mention to you a very beautiful hadith, a very important hadith which is in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari and is the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would teach them the dua of al-istikhara just as that they would be taught a chapter from the Qur'an fi amurina kullina in all of our affairs this goes to show the importance of this particular dua in the life of every Muslim. But the question is now, what are some of those rulings and some important points regarding Salatu al-Istikhara or the dua of al-Istikhara? So in the hadith it mentions that Jabir radiallahu an said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us this particular dua and that it should be offered, i.e. this dua is offered when a person offers two raka'ah that is not from the obligatory prayers. So the person offers two nafil or two voluntary raka'ah and then makes the dua. The question is now that this particular dua, which is quite a long dua, and I would recommend my brothers and sisters to, if they don't understand the Arabic, to go to the Arabic and find a translation of it so they can understand the supplication that they are making. So this particular hadith mentions that this dua is to be made at the end of the prayer. Now, is this while you are in a sitting position, i.e. that you are still in your prayer, you have not said assalamu alaikum, and that this is the time for you to make the dua, or is it that you make two raka'ah, you complete, you make taslim, and then you make the dua afterwards. From the outset, we will say that both are permissible. It is allowed for you to make this particular dua while in the salah, just before you make taslim. And it is also permitted for you to do that when you have completed these two raka'ah and then you make the dua afterwards. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, in line with many of the ulama, they state that it is probably better to make the dua while you are actually in the prayer, while in that sitting position just as the Prophet ﷺ would do regularly while in that sitting position is to make lots and lots of dua. So this is the first thing inshallah ta'ala when to make this particular dua. And we said that both are valid. Okay, another couple of issues inshallah ta'ala. What is the purpose of Salat al-Istikhara or the dua of al-Istikhara? We should first of all realize that I'm seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance on a matter. But what is recommended as Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he mentions that you make al-istishara qabl al-istikhara. Is that you consult people before you actually offer this dua. And what we mean by to consult others is that speak to somebody whom you believe can give you a beneficial advice about a matter which you are not sure what choice to make. Now these matters are not in involved with wajibat, obligatory matters, or to do with haram, because you have to fulfill that matter. There's no istikhara in wajib. Or, for example, in something which is haram, there's no choice in the matter, in the haram, you have to stay away from it. Or makruhat, or things which are disliked, you have to, well, at least you should stay away from it. Al-istikhara is done in matters of al-ibaha, those matters which are allowed for you, okay? And that you're not sure what is better for you. Should you, should you do this? Or should you do that? Or even you may have more than two matters to make a choice over. So it is important for you to consult with somebody who can give you a beneficial advice about the matter, not for them to make the choice for you. This is very important. When you consult, you're not asking people to make that decision for you. Ultimately, the decision must be yours. So you consult before you make the istikhara. Once you have consulted one or two or maybe three trusted people. It is not as I want to consult as many people as I can because that may create confusion. But you ask one or two people whom that you feel that you can benefit from. And then after that, you make the dua in the prayer. Another important matter for us to discuss is for our sisters, that there are certain times of the month 
where they are not offering their salah due to the cycle that they have. What do they do in this situation? Is it allowed for them just to make the dua alone without the salah, knowing that they cannot pray? Absolutely they can, inshallah ta'ala. So it is allowed for the woman who's on a monthly cycle just to make the dua alone, dua al-istikhara, concerning that matter which she is not sure about. And we're remembering, brothers and sisters, this is not to do with matters which is an obligation or haram or something which is disliked. We're talking about matters which are just permitted for you and you're not sure what to do. Now the dua itself can be found in the fortress of the Muslim. And I would recommend you all, inshallah ta'ala, to go through it with its meanings. And this is the dua. Okay, brothers and sisters, this being the dua, remembering that you understand what it means and that you're seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance in that matter. Once the decision has been made, that you have no regret after that. You shouldn't be saying to yourself, if I had done this or if I had done that. You consulted, you made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you made the decision and this was the best. And the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to that what is best. Ameen. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته